Hello, my name is Ryan Page, and I'm an application specialist for Tecla Structures. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing the topic of firm folders, or in other words, managing and utilizing your own Tecla Structure settings across all of your projects for all of your users. To keep things simple and straightforward, we're going to be splitting this topic up into two separate videos. Part one, which is this video, is going to cover an introduction to firm folders. Whereas part two is going to discuss how to implement a firm folder for your company and what steps are required. Now, if you're already familiar with the concept of a firm folder and its benefits, then you can go ahead and skip to part two. However, if this is your first time broaching the subject, it's recommended that you start here with part one. For part one specifically though, the topics we're going to be covering are, what is a firm folder and why to use one? Where is the best place to put your firm folder? How does a firm folder work? Specifically, how do we organize files within that folder structure and understanding Tecla advanced options and setting a firm folder location manually. Then we'll touch on an example using part settings and how they work within a firm folder. This concludes part one of our firm folder video series. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out part two of this series where we discuss setting up and using firm folders throughout a company. Items will still be located in the dropdown, but now located permanently in our firm folder. Let's take a peek at what a typical firm folder might look like, and also what happens when we create safe settings inside of our model. Alright, so here we have a basic example of a firm folder, and as you can see, it's no different than any other folder on your computer or server. But before I get into what's inside, I'd first like to talk about what the best place to put your firm folder would be. You can see here I've placed this on my G drive, and it's pretty close to the root or the beginning of the drive. This makes it much easier to find and work with. I use the name Tecla Company Firm, but you can make yours named anything really, of uh, just Firm or Tecla Settings or something that's more specific to the way you need to organize your data in your company. Now, inside the firm folder, I've created some, a couple of subfolders to help organize the different settings I'll be placing inside. This is not a complete list, but it's just an example to give us an idea on how you can create a firm folder and how you may want to organize the information inside of it. Now, you don't have to go this far. You can keep it simple and just dump every setting you have inside the firm folder here. However, it's going to get a little difficult to manage and keep up to date with all the settings you have if you don't organize it. With that said, let's take a peek inside one of these subfolders. Let's look at concrete part settings here up at the top. And as you can see, when we go inside, I've placed a couple of settings for some concrete columns. Now, this is not a complete list of settings. Naturally, you're going to have all sorts of settings for columns, beams, pad footings, maybe different components, that sort of stuff. But this will serve as an example for us to ensure that Tecla is looking at the right place when we tell it to look at the firm folder. Once we do that in our advanced settings, we should be able to see these in the drop downs for presets for our parts. Here we have a brand new blank model. If you recall in our firm folder, we had some settings for concrete columns. Now, if we execute that tool and then come over to the properties pane and drop down the presets, you can see that they're not listed. All we have are the default out of the box settings. In order to see those custom settings, we're going to need to tell Tecla to look at our firm folder location. And we can do so by first going to File, then Settings, and then Advanced Options. Now on the left-hand side, we're going to want to make sure to choose File Locations. And then once we do, we'll be able to see a list of different file locations that this model is currently pointing to. 
You'll also notice that some of them are blank, including the one for our firm folder, which is xs underscore firm. In order to read those settings that we have, we need to populate that field with the file path to our firm folder. Now what we can do is go back to our firm folder and select the file path and copy it. And then back to our advanced options and paste it in the value field for xs underscore firm. Then we want to hit apply and when we do we'll receive a pop-up window that reads the following options will not be changed until you close and reopen your model. Let's hit OK then OK in the advanced options. Now before we can reopen our model we're going to want to go ahead and save otherwise our changes are not going to be applied. So let's do that first then go file open select this model and then click the open button. Once the model reopens, we'll check our advanced options to make sure the file path has been applied, and then we can check our concrete column tool to see if our settings are now listed. Okay, so let's go back to File, Settings, Advanced Options, make sure we're at File Locations, and look at XS underscore Firm, and you can see that our file path is still there. Let's go ahead and execute the concrete column tool and see if our test settings for C1 and 2 are now listed. Drop down the menu and the, yep, there they are, TR underscore column C1 and C2. Now we're able to use these settings and save ourselves some time in creating certain types of parts. The thing to keep in mind here is that we just pointed Tecla to our firm folder manually. However, this is not the optimal way to accomplish this for every model that you create. In part two of the series, we're going to cover the steps required to set your firm folder for every model going forward just once and then never having to do it again. But before we end part one, let's take a quick peek at creating save settings to be used in our firm folders. Creating a save setting for part is pretty straightforward in Tecla structures. We'll use the concrete pad footing tool as an example, but this applies to any part that you can create. Simply execute the tool that you want to create a setting for and place the part in your model. Then select that part and change its parameters in the properties pane. Once you're satisfied that things are how you need them to be, just go to the top of the properties pane and provide a name for the setting in the field that is next to the save icon. Hello, my name is Ryan Page and I'm an application specialist. Usually this is a two or three character abbreviation of your company. For example, Trimble, I'm using TR. Then next to that, I'll specify the part type, or in this case, footing. This is really helpful if I have several types of footing settings I need to create, as they will all be listed together and then alphabetically. Lastly, we just need to provide the unique identifier. For our pad footing, we're using F1 as the type. Once we provide the name, we just need to click the saved icon right next to the field, and now it should show and listed in our drop-down menu. Keep in mind that this is pretty universal throughout Tecla. Anywhere there is a save icon for parts in the properties pane, or a saved as field for things such as components, filters, drawing settings, you can create your own settings for them and save them. Now, once we create them, all we need to do is go back to our model folder and then to our attributes subfolder and cut and paste those files that we created into our firm folder. It should be really easy to find them since we will have the company prefix of TR or your company prefix at the beginning of each name for each setting we've just created. Now, I will point out, you want to make sure that you cut them from the attributes folder and not copy. Otherwise, the model will still read from the attributes folder if you have duplicate files in both the model folder and the firm folder. We want to make sure that they only exist inside the firm folder. And then to verify, we should just save our model and then reopen it, where those items will still be located in the dropdown, but now located permanently in our firm folder. This concludes part one of our firm folder video series. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out part two of this series where we discuss setting up and using firm folders throughout a company. For more information on the topics discussed in this video, please see the information listed in the description. For other topics, make sure to visit our Tecla User Assistance webpage for product guides, support articles, tutorials, and more.